Hello everyone, we're all going on a summer holiday. Well, enough of that. Wish you were here. Uh, tonight I'm going to talk about how to plan a holiday for parents of autistic children. As any parent will tell you, uh, holiday time is, uh, can be a very, very stressful time. It's up there with um, planning, buying a mortgage and moving house is one of the most stressful things you can do. And many people do it every year. It's that time of year when many families look forward to their summer holiday. We're now in July. Uh, schools have just broken up in the UK. And we have all the excitement and expectation that going on holiday brings. However exciting as it may be to plan a holiday, there are likely to be a number of extra things to consider with regard to the journey and holiday destination when one or more of your children are autistic. A holiday, by definition, is a break from the normal family routine and environment, and planning a holiday is rarely a stress-free experience. For autistic children who may be very resistant to change, this stress may seem unbearable. However, with extra care and attention and plenty of forward planning, the autistic child can be prepared for these changes and be supported throughout the journey and at their holiday destination. So here are a few of my tips for parents to choose um, and to support their autistic child. So begin with choosing your holiday. Choosing a holiday can be a very expensive and complex process. The parent needs to consider whether to holiday at home, have a staycation as we call it in the UK, or go on holiday abroad. They have to decide on the destination, the type of accommodation and facilities. And if you're a parent or autistic child or children, you have to throw extra consideration into that already busy mix. In many instances, a trial run, particularly regarding transport, can help to influence the decision as to whether a holiday should be at home or abroad. If your autistic child has never flown abroad or been on holiday abroad, it may be wise to take him or her on a short flight in country beforehand to help to acclimatise to the process involved. From the hectic and crowded nation, nature sorry, of the airport environment through to a brief experience of being in flight, it could be a very short holiday and a very traumatic start to a holiday abroad if your child has a major meltdown at an airport or on an aircraft because they've never previously been exposed to this experience before. I know when my, uh, when my son was little, before we went on holiday to Canada, he had a little short journey to um, Edinburgh with his grandpa to get him used to the airport environment, getting used to flying on the plane, getting used to a little bit of that waiting time. I know it's not as big and as um, hectic as on a um, long haul flight, but gets him used to the experience of, of, of flying. Very, very useful and it's much cheaper than buying, spending £700 on a, on a, on a plane ticket and then realise the child just cannot, whatever you, process, whatever you do as a, as a parent, cannot cope with that environment. It saves a lot of angst and a lot of um, trouble that you, you could end up in the future. So it's, it's basically about the idea of that is to desensitise um, this experience. And again, if you're not going on holiday abroad, if you're just going on a long distance journey by train, again, it's the same experience. Get them used to being on a shorter train journey, get used to waiting around at the station, get them used to the noise, the smells and the, um, the visuals of that environment and all the crowds before you go on the big holiday. Have a day trip somewhere if it's, if it's, if it's local. So again, that gets them used to that experience. Uh, so we'll talk more about uh, the process of deploying a bit later on in the program. Now, I'm not going to insult anybody's intelligence here by stating which holiday destination is best for an autistic child. Every autistic child is a unique individual. It's an old adage, but it's true, and it's worth repeating ad infinitum if you have to, that every autistic child is unique. In the same way that there are six to eight billion people on this planet, and each one of those is unique. Even identical twins are not exactly alike in every aspect so and again so with autism 
Some are less resistant to change than others. Others, and I've experienced this myself when working with adults that are autistic, sometimes, even though they might be resistant to change, a bigger change, a one-off change, can actually be easier for them than, than increments of smaller changes. It, it depends on the individual. So what might be an ideal destination for one child could be an unmitigated disaster for another. For some children may prefer an autistic type environment. Others might find that not the sort of thing they want. They'd like to try and, as, as much as possible with support to have the same holiday experience, the same sort of holiday destination as everybody else, again, with support. Therefore, when it comes to choosing your holiday destination, be guided by your knowledge of your own child. Ex professionals are always saying when it comes to autism, parents are the experts on their children. In my experience, they are until the professionals disagree, but that is another story. What I'm, what I'm basically saying, you know your child and you know your child's strengths and weaknesses. And it is perfectly okay to take your child out of their comfort zone, but the best way to do it for a graded period of desensitization so they get used to the experience. There's nothing, you know, you don't want to spend, uh, which you could do in the, these days of, of train strikes, plane strikes and all this sort of business, spending six hours waiting for a plane in an airport and the little Jimmy's never, and you're not prepared, you've not got activities for him to do, you've not prepared beforehand for the airport of a quiet lounge you can go to, and you're, you're, you're basically setting yourself up to fail. So the best way is whatever destination you consider, check it out thoroughly beforehand. Hello everyone. And uh, where are we? Check, take the destination beforehand and make sure it's right for your child. You know your child best. Um, and again, you know his limitations and expectations. It's a good idea to seek recommendations from friends and families and other parents of autistic children too. They can be very beneficial in helping to work out the pros and cons of possible destinations. But ultimately, when it comes to your child, I'll keep saying this and I'll keep repeating it if I have to, you are the expert to understanding your child's needs. As I say, one autistic child might be okay going abroad, another, it's it's too big a change uh, until, they're, until they're ready, um, so you have to prepare them for that. So whatever you decide, it's a good idea to do your research before Make, uh, making, securing a deposit or making any final decision. Here, the internet comes into its own. It's a very valuable tool. Not only can, you, can it help you choose your destination, you can take photographs, uh, you can um, help your child to choose what sort of, com sort of um, facilities they might like. You can get a feel of the area. You, you, very often travel guides on, on the internet, they'll actually show you the place of interest nearby. So again, if your child's got special interests, that's again could be a way of getting them to accept going to a, to a certain destination. For example, if um, someone's never been on holiday um, to New York or to Disneyland, but they're mega into Disney or mega into Comic Con or or whatever, or they're into Hollywood musicals or whatever Broadway musicals, sorry, then that may be a way to get them over their fears. Some people are profoundly um, anxious around traveling, but if they're going to travel from A to B to uh, fulfill a child or dream to, to help them with their special activity, it's a very good idea. So not only does the internet help by giving images of the destination, as I said, places of interest nearby, it can also help you to decide on the type of accommodation that might be more commensurate, that's a posh word, isn't it, with <laughs> your child's needs and provide some details about the facilities provided and whether the staff have an understanding of autism or disabilities in general. Uh, somebody's just wrote here in the chat, 100% no one knows your kid better than you. And again, it's always a good idea to make sure if there's, uh, some ladies just put in here, uh, make sure if there's loud and in entertainment, make sure you know all that before or you're in somewhere on the quiet part of the campus or the hotel complex, so you're away from some of that noise. And again, in some ways, the more child-friendly, <laughs> it sounds stupid, but the more child-friendly an environment can be, the, the more challenging and the more sensory overload it creates for an autistic child. 
So, and again, it's, it's the same in any other thing, even if it's like a child when it comes to uh, hospital wards, etc. The more child friend, friendly something is, the, in many ways, the more difficult it can be to account for the autistic child because it's too much in your face. So, when it comes to choosing your destination, uh, your accommodation, sorry, points to consider uh, should be whether you're using self contained units such as chalet, caravan, villa, tent, even rather than a busy hotel complex. If you are staying in a hotel, is it best to be in a quiet corner? Uh, is it it's best maybe not to have one near the lift, uh, unless your child likes playing with a lift. But again, the sound of the lift, you know, some hotels, you can hear the lift going up and down all the time. If you're in the room next door, it can be quite noisy. Uh, and again, so think about little, little things like that. Uh, think about anything specific that might heighten your child's anxiety, such as noise, crowd too much visual uh, sensory input is there too much bright lightning is, is there uh, too much going on too much activity for example butlins for example when a child children were little went to butlins uh, and it was crazy i don't know if it's like that now but in the in the big tent the big big thing there uh, these have half a dozen activities going on at the same time all blasting up pop music but not all blasting the same tunes so you'd have six or seven different pieces of loud music competing with one another. It was a, it was a sensory nightmare. So again, little, little things like that to consider as well. Uh, can they accommodate if your child has restrictive diet? Uh, are children's activities accessible or appropriate for your child's specific needs? Sorry about this, I'm going to sneeze in a minute. Are they strictly age specific or is there some flexibility in adapting to the individual need of your autistic child? Uh, it can be very frustrating if you've got a child that's, say, six or seven, but they're developmentally at to age four or five, and they're uh, considered uh, too old to go with the go in the, the with the younger younger age group, where they might developmentally be at that stage. So again, all sort of things like that can be very uh, frustrating for the, for the parent. You know, not everything is black and white when it comes to children, but in particular with autism. Uh, in the UK, if we're picking a holiday abroad, the National Autistic Society's Autism Services Directory lists holiday venues in the UK and abroad which have stated that they are suitable for autistic people. Obviously, it's a directory that they're not; they don't endorse these particular venues. But these are these are um, uh, companies that have approached the National Autistic Society and said. Um, we feel that we can accommodate autistic children. So they're reaching out to autistic parents. So one would assume they've done a little bit of research. Uh, so again, these are places to consider as well. So that could be a useful starting point when it comes to your, your search. Uh, the National Autistic Society also and, and other national bodies can give information on a small number of organisations such as the Family Fund who may be able to help you with the costs of a holiday as well. We've used them in the past for various things um, and they um, offer grants until uh, at least age 18. I think it may even be up to an age 21. Very, very useful. They can, they can sometimes even cover the whole cost of a holiday. Very, very worth, certainly worth applying for. And they can be a great help in contributing toward, as I said, holiday costs uh, when you have an autistic or, or a disabled child in your family and you're on a tight budget. And also sometimes you may not necessarily... Um, you may have to spend a little bit extra for the facilities you may, may need for your child. And that's where uh, help like this can come, come in handy. So once your child is old enough, obviously once they're old enough and if they're, they're capable, try to involve them in choosing and planning the holiday. Not immediately because that could be too stressful. What, what I'm saying is once you've narrowed it down to whether you want to go to holiday abroad or uh, at home and you sort of chosen the type of accommodation, when you're narrowing down the venue, that's a good idea to involve your child then at, at choosing where they want to go. But obviously, too much choice for many many children can be too frustrating, and also they can, it's, it's overwhelming for, for for any child of a young age. If you're autistic, even more so. But again, some autistic children just even find the mere mention of going on holiday to be a frightening prospect. So for these children, uh, it's it's um, little pieces of information they're going to need over a longer period of time. So you get so you plant in the seed of going on holiday, but they're not immediately thinking, "Oh, crikey, we're going tomorrow," and they get all stressed about it. So again, it depends on the individual child, and everyone is unique. 
So by gradually involving your child in these decisions, this helps to eliminate some of the anxieties around going on holiday. But again, try not to overload them with too much information or too many choices. Stick to two or three choices at a time. Again, it's too overwhelming otherwise. And here again, use photos from the internet, which may help in relieving anxiety about the destination facilities. Some children, it's a good idea to start drip feed information. So gradually over a period of time, they've been given a bit more information and reinforcing what was said before. So, so they're gradually coming round and accustomed to the idea. And again, it all depends on your child's autism profile, but these are sort of issues that are worth considering. So the next stage, and once you've chosen your holiday and where you're going to go, you may need to customise your holiday and decide uh, what sort of adjustments you may need to help your child have a have a as anxious free holiday as, you, as they can. Again, it's always advisable to let the holiday company know your requirements at the time of booking. The earlier they're aware, the earlier it is. Now, if they can't accommodate um, certain things, like they do not have disabled, I don't know this day and age, you should have, don't have, don't not autism friendly, or can't offer um, alternatives to certain things, even as simple as. Um, having you know allowing you to bring your own sheets or or, or uh, having uh, different facilities that are less you no know, different um, lighting for instance in some rooms you just say can we have just if is it possible to have a room that doesn't have fluorescent lighting for example it's not something that's really going to cost them cost them an arm and a leg and as long as they're given plenty of warning there's no reason why they can't make these reasonable adjustments and it's much too late when you arrive or just a week before to just say this would be a good good help so the earlier that they know the earlier they can accommodate and if they can't then you've got plenty of time to find another venue so special requirements well what we're looking at here i've already mentioned this uh need to have accommodation in a quiet quieter area of the holiday complex you may need to sit in a particular area at meal time to have a specific meal time so you may can you ask is it possible to reserve a table for a particular time every single day because again, you're keeping that, that uh, routine, that structure in place. So if the child used to have at home having the meals at five o'clock every day, you can have a little bit of flexibility on holiday. But if that's the one thing that they've always had, that's no particular biggie that you can't continue that on holiday. So at least they've got some element of familiarity amongst all these changes that are going on. Uh, and you can always also ask and have a particular seat on transport, like a window or, or aisle seat so that... Now, if, if they don't, so that it, you're accommodating their individual sensory preferences. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, if the child's on medication, is there a safe place to store them? There's all sorts of things you need to consider. And also, uh, sensory co uh, consideration already mentioned with regards to lighting and things. But it's a good idea to um, say, my child's going to be wearing ear defenders. Is that OK? You know, if, 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 if they've got a problem with that, well, it's their problem. Uh, and again, uh, my child won't be bringing sensory fiddle or chew toys and it's like that, you know, is that OK? So that they're, they're prepared that, it, you know, and again, if they think it may distress other people, um, quiet corn is not a problem. Again, provision uh, for of permitting comfort items to reduce stress and anxiety. Is it OK if, if um, they, they, they bring their doll to them and meals, etc., whatever? Even if they're like an older child, because obviously a little child, child, they're not a normally a problem. But you get to a certain age, it, it's, it's, so I say, less socially inappropriate. But if it, if it helps that child to relax, then surely it's better for everyone, including the hotel guests or uh, complex guests uh, and uh, the staff, as well as yourself and your family and your child. So again, any reasonable adjustment that you feel may benefit your autistic child must be detailed and confirmed in writing because they're verbally agreed they'll say oh they'll have forgotten it or, or they've written it down on a piece of paper and they've lost it somewhere but if you've got a written agreement with a copy and you can then have a copy brought along with you on your holiday and it also and it also means if they've actually said in writing we can provide this we can provide for instance i, I don't know if you if, if if they only have spring mattresses and they say oh yeah my child doesn't like spring mattresses can we have memory foam and they provide something like that then then again they've agreed to make that adjustment if they haven't then they've broken their contract so it's a, it's a good idea and again but the big important thing here before we even get to the holiday is preparation the big 
the big P, be prepared. Like a Boy Scout, really. So whilst every autistic child is unique, preparation for change is very important. Many autistic children find change of routine very difficult, especially such a big change. Uh, well, we, but, such as a holiday with so many unknowns and uncertainties. For example, um, talking about a holiday too soon, as already mentioned, can in itself cause problems and anxiety for children. Or for some older children or young adults, they may find being involved in the decision making around the choice of com holiday too com complex. But cl further down the line, they might want to be involved as much as possible because that will help reduce their anxieties because they will take some control of the holiday um, decisions themselves as well as them and they'll feel like they're included they'll feel like they're, they're being a bit more grown up and again that'll help re reduce their anxieties but amongst all this before i continue further always remember if you, particularly if you've got more than one child if you've got um, other children that aren't autistic always involve them in the, them in the holiday as well um, it shouldn't just be everything accommodate for an autistic child and that child being totally left out. You may have, you know, always think if they're making reasonable adjustments for an autistic child, what are the ordinary child uh, facility, child friendly activities for, your, for the non-autistic child? So they too have a good holiday and they have a bit of respite from their sibling in the same way that you would like some sort of respite from the grind of everyday life, etc. So always bear that in mind as well. However, so once your holiday has been booked and confirmed, it may be a good idea to start telling your child how soon and again with how much information will depend on the individual child, their age, their autism presentation. But again, I've mentioned right at the beginning, you are the expert on your child. Personally, I would be inclined to concentrate on the destination first and then drip feed additional information in the weeks and months immediately preceding the holiday. Obviously, it depends on the individual child. So they're gr so you're, what you're gradually doing, you're desensitising them to the prospect of going on holiday with all those changes, but you're introducing planned stage uh, in incremental changes, uh, stages over a period of time. With more information, closer they get. And also what you're doing as well, if you give too much information right at the beginning, they can think, and particularly those autistic children have no concept of time, they can think, oh, you must have mentioned the holiday work, oh, it's tomorrow. You know, you get that same anxiety around the holiday that you do about Christmas. You know, when, you, when you're talking about it too soon, it can cause too much anxiety as well. So again, drip feeding, depend on the child, is quite a good, good way of doing it. So there are some tips that might help. Again, as I already mentioned, gradually introduce your child to the holiday. If you pick photos and destination complex, maybe in the holiday brochures, if such things still exist these days. Also start researching nearby places of interest, as I said. And if that child's interested in history, go to somewhere that's got a bit of history to it. If that child just, is just happy just lay on the beach, then that's less of an issue. If the child likes, go, likes a bit of nature, likes a good walk somewhere where there's near, nearby um, nature reserve or nearby parks where, where you can go for a good walk, etc. And again, start researching places of interest once you've booked your own destination so, you, so that by the time you go on holiday, you're almost like a mini expert on what the facilities are, and are in that area. So involve the whole family in this. Again, after all, as I've just mentioned, always consider the non-autistic siblings as well. Uh, gradually as you go on, compile a visual guide or photo booklet to reinforce information about the holiday and help prepare for the transition. And consider a daily visual countdown calendar of how many days to holiday. It's like how many nights or how many sleeps to Christmas. You could do the like how many sleeps to the holiday is a good countdown as well. And then again, you don't do this too soon, but it does, it, it does bring that um, preparation up. And maybe in the last week, couple of weeks or so, gradually introduce a little task for the, for the child to know what toys you're going to bring, what books you're going to bring, what. Uh, century toys you're going to bring so, you, so each day you may have a little activity to go with it again it's preparing them for the holiday it also means that the last minute they prepared everything they want to take so uh, try to limit um, you may even sorry um, prepare a holiday schedule of activities as well which may be very useful as well but again not nothing too um, spe specific just to give them some sort of familiarity sort of things they might you might do on holiday you can always change the days it's not a problem but again, taking into account preferred interests, it may be, oh, oh 
uh, like for instance, if you've been flying the first day, you're going to be la you're going to be you may be jet lagged and thinking, well, we're going to have a lazy day on the beach, a lazy day at the pool, rather than go out go shopping or, or doing a lot of sightseeing. So again, think of the sort of things you're going to be doing. And again, but try to limit these activities and choices. No more than a couple of activities per day to allow for flexibility and some choice time. Now, I appreciate that choice can be very, very difficult for autistic people. So what you do then, you, you give them options during that choice. Now, if the weather's fine, we'll do this. Uh, if, if the weather's not fine, we'll, 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 we'll do an activity inside. So again, you, you're having an option, a plan A and a plan B as much as you can. Obviously, there's going to be unexpected things that happen on holidays. There always is in life. And again, on that subject, prepare for some possible unavoidable changes, such as tra travel delays, in incremental weather. Uh, and again, a social story about unplanned change may be a useful tool. If you're not familiar with social stories, uh, they were created by Carol Gray in the United States. And basically, they're, they're um, short um, five or six sentences that each sentence gives um, all, all around, sorry, I'm not saying this very well, all around a particular theme. For example, it might be, uh, we're going on holiday. So the first line would be, we're going on holiday. And the second line might be, I'm anxious about this. The third line is, what will I do? What, what will I do when I'm anxious? Then the fourth sentence could be, talk to mummy and daddy or the teachers. And so it, gradually what you're doing, you, you're, you're helping the child to help themselves to self-manage a lot of their anxieties and preparing them for certain changes. You can do it for behaviours as well, not like when I'm angry, I do this. It's okay to be angry, but not okay to hurt somebody. These are sort of things. Now, I'm, I will be doing a presentation of social stories at another, another stage. Um, but if someone would like a social story and go on holiday, uh, leave a comment here or, or message me or, or drop me an email or whatever and then I'll I'll send you a social story it's not difficult so again if you're going on holiday as for everything in life you have to take documents with you uh, and in the UK uh, many tourist attractions will offer autistic or disabled customers a reduced entry fee or a carer free entrance or, or whatever so and can arrange special access facilities many also provide passes to some activities to reduce queuing and waiting times so this may include uh, permission to stand outside the exit to an activity rather than queuing at the entrance so again if you're going to if you want to access these these facilities uh, then it's a good idea to have proof you're going to need proof of um, that your child has autism or is disabled or the proof that you're a carer so you can need to bring like a DLA award letter, disability living allowance, personal independence payment or PIP letter, uh, carer's allowance letter, or, or some something from the GP to say this child has autism or whatever. Um, and some facilities also accept something called a carer's card, which especially cinemas, which allows a carer free entry uh, when accompanied by an autistic or disabled person. Again, it may also be useful to have a copy of a doctor's letter confirming diagnosis and I would recommend this for anyone on holiday, um, take a holiday passport. You d the last thing you want to do is to be, if you, yourself, your child to be ill on holiday, but if they are and they have to go to a strange GP or, or to the A&E or, or accident emergency or anything, it's a good idea to have a hospital passport which outlines the child's recent medical history and how their autism affects them to lessen your child's um, uh, anxieties around uh, having medical uh, attention uh, these again these are, can be essential in reducing your child's distress if they fall ill on holiday these can be downloaded from the national autistic society website uh, www.autism.org.uk failing that drop me a line and I'll, I'll, I'll send one over to you via email it's that they're, they're easy easy to fill in there's also a guide that goes with it to help you it's certainly worth worth doing uh, in the UK, of course, all children up to the age of 15 must have their own passports. And from 16 years onwards, um, they are eligible for the standard 10 year passport. In order to uh, information about applying for a UK passport, you go to the government website, which is www.gov.uk forward slash passports. Whatever holiday you book, uh, whether it's UK or abroad, it's always advisable to buy travel insurance. This can offer protection for trip cancellations, 
um, even if you're not holidaying abroad. And again, if you're holidaying abroad, travel insurance is essential. I cannot rule that out enough, especially to cover missed transport or delayed departure, but more importantly, medical or other emergencies, because obviously you're not covered by the NHS if you're you know, outside the UK. So again, you may have to pay for that treatment. Um, again, lost, stolen or damaged items, including baggies, passports, money, etc. And, protect, and also protect against any accidental damage to property or persons by you or your autistic child, because they can be little and they can damage property or, or injure people due to their autism presentation. Again, always make sure that your travel insurance meets your autistic child's needs. Uh, whilst autism is not, I repeat, not uh, a mental Ill illness or medical condition, it falls under the banner of pre-existing medical conditions. In, in fact, it's, it's a chronic condition. It's something that you, you develop as a child, or were you born with, it, presentations start as you're a child and you have it for your whole life and it must be declared in a travel insurance form if if it's not and little jimmy decides to smash a load of windows or something on holiday and you've not mentioned he's autistic then then they're not going to be so accommodating uh, when it comes to insurance etc so again uh, autism is covered under disability discrimination uh, legislation and it is illegal in the UK for insurers to refuse you cover because your child's autistic. However, they may impose certain conditions on your policy or charge you a bit more. Uh, so I recommend, I uh, did an internet search the other day, uh, there's a company called All Clear Travel Insurance in the UK which specialise in insurance for pre-existing conditions, uh, particularly autism, and they can be found at www allcleartravel.co.uk so uh, I don't know if any of you have, have ever used one or have heard of them there's something called an autism alert card and of course you're all aware of these some sunflower lanyards that they're wearing um, in these crazy Covid days that we're having they, can, they also do an autism specific one as well uh, and I would recommend that all parents of autistic child carry an autism alert card or the child themselves. It's free to download, an autism alert card, for example, is free to trans, uh, download from the National Autistic Society website. It's, and it's a great way to let, your, let people know that A, your child is autistic and might need some extra help or in, help in certain situations. Um, it, may consi it may contain w uh, words along this sort of line. My son or daughter uh, is autistic. Please show some understanding Autism is a disability. Please be patient. And, oh, and then, of course, you've got the lanyards as well, which may allow them to be exempt from um, wearing masks in these crazy COVID days, etc. So there we go. Um, I've just mentioned Sunflower Lanyard. This was uh, first adopted by Gatwick Airport, of all places, in May 2016. And now operates for up the UK's busiest airports and beyond. So it's, it's had a history way before COVID. You're talking four years pre-COVID. Since then, many airports have now recognised uh, the use of them. I recognise that the airport in environment can be hostile environment to uh, autistic children, um, people and people with um, hidden disabilities. Um, and so they may benefit from extra support. So s some airports, for example, Newcastle International Airport, even have their own passport. We just mentioned the holiday hospital one. They have the specific one uh, for the hotel, that, um, for the airport, sorry, that says, this child is autistic. We provide, the um, please help this child do this. And, and they provide facilities as well. Manchester Airport is another one. They even have their own sunflower room, which provides a break for the, from the crowds and has... Uh, reduced noise, uh, um, uh, whatever, subdued lighting, I'm trying to find the right word then, and uh, and it's away from the hustle and bustle. If travelling abroad, it's also worth checking that your your airport's website, um, as they may have similar facilities they do in the UK. And then the Sunflower Lanyard, because it states that the, the wearer has an in, invisible disability, it may it, they can also have them worded it says 
due to my individual in, indivisible sorry invisible disability i am unable to wear a, a face covering because it's very very useful particularly if your child has sensory difficulties around mask wearing particularly if you go into places where they still have covid restrictions in place uh, an idea get how to get one of these lanyards the best place to get one from that's the official one is uh, hidden disabilities store.com and say they're only a few, few quid and they're certainly worth getting so for those go, going abroad or taking a short flight speak to the airline beforehand to discuss specific requirements as i just said, said most airlines these days are very accommodating if they've got, got some pre-warning so you can check what they've got uh, and that may be even arranged to have your an alternative check-in time for instance you could be so instead of waiting you know getting there two hours before maybe getting there that they may allow you to go at a different time so that you don't have to wait around so much long at the airport etc and they may also have the quieter waiting area as well they may also let you board the plane first or last to reduce your child's anxiety you're not part of that rugby scrum or getting on the plane and there can be a lot of long waiting around airports um, it's always the likelihood of unexpected delays if it's, it's always going to happen and summertime it's always worse than ever when than any other time i don't know why but the, the french in france for instance they, they love nothing better than summer holidays let's have an air traffic controller strike or some, some other some other thing just to mess everybody's holiday plans so it's very prudent to take anything in your hand luggage or your child have a backpack even better if they're over a certain age to make your child's journey more comfortable you now bring along things like ear defenders headphones so i can listen to music bring their tablet or smartphone books toys and comforters such as pillows their own special blanket cuddly toy or whatever in addition of us as i mentioned london gatwick offers an autism friendly visual guide you can you can download and and edinburgh airport similar as well so again most airports these days are really being um, quite um, proactive in these in these issues right traveling but now obviously traveling by train it's slightly less stressful experience than, than get the or boat than, than within the airport but again it's important to bring these items we've just mentioned to distract relax and occupy your child's attention throughout the journey and doing all the waiting and many train stations and ferry port also offer assistance for autistic travellers. Again, always a good idea to contact the station or port beforehand to inquire what support they can offer. Uh, National Rail also have information for disabled passengers. So that's that's the travelling done. Now, what do you do? what's the trip tips at the destination? Visiting attractions, and I mentioned right at the beginning plan and prepare ahead contact attractions beforehand to inquire what support is available to autistic people particularly children and most destinations will be happy to accommodate after all there's a lot of us about there's a lot of autistic people like myself we're one in 100 one in 68 depending on what what uh, statistics you use so you're talking about in the uk between 700,000 and a million autistic people so that's a lot of people. So if, if they're not accommodating those people, they're cutting their own throats. So it's, it's, it's a good idea to, um, for them to have the facilities for us. And if they don't, ask why. Because as I say, you can just say, well, you lost my custom then. And if enough people do that, they will soon uh, change their, their viewpoint. Again, eating out, think ahead, book restaurants in advance to guarantee seating, to let to quieter area. Maybe you can have a, have a reserve table as well. Uh, mention specific dietary or sensory requirements again like i mentioned earlier consider a social story to prepare the child beforehand again most places these days will have disabled toilets and if you're holiday in the uk always a good idea to consider purchasing a radar key because some of our holiday destinations are quite some of the cities are quite old now and they they may have a disabled toilet and if it's a council one it may be locked and you need a radar key don't know why they still lock them but there you go so again to conclude uh, planning and going on holiday can be very exciting but it's also extremely stressful for everybody but if you're autistic even more so 
new faces, new places, significant change of routine, and possibly you've got climate and language differences also as well to, to think in as well, can all cause heightened anxiety. And even with meticulous planning, there's going to be some unexpected stresses and hurdles along the way. However, being the parent of an autistic child should not prevent the, po the prospect or reality of having a holiday. I hope that these tips, and they're only tips, and that these are just my personal tips and a few I've, I've, I've learned from other people and other parents, hopefully they will help to turn your holiday dreams into reality and less the possibility of experiencing a holiday nightmare. If you need further tips or advice or guidance, please leave a comment uh, next now, and I'll, I'll reply now. If not, um, contact me via my website, wideforautism.co.uk. And finally, happy holiday. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody, have you got any comments, anybody, before I go? Okay, then. Thank you very much for everybody. Bye-bye.